We have some gorgeous eye candy on the sun's west limb, and some fast solar wind is coming around the bend. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week remains a bit on the calm side as we take a look at our Earth-facing disk. Look in the south late on the 14th into the 15th. You can see that solar storm launch. That solar storm is actually going south and west of Earth, and it's actually going beneath Earth right now as we speak, not really giving us much of an impact. But as we take a look at the rest of the disk, look up in the north. Do you see that massive prominence? My goodness, this thing is like this big tornado, and it just lasts and lasts through the 15th, the 16th and end of the 17th before the thing finally collapses. So that was some gorgeous eye candy that we got to watch for a little while. Meanwhile, as we take a look at the rest of the disk, we do have a small coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone now. Again, not much of an effect because it's just not giving us that much uh, fast solar wind. But look down in the south, we have a much larger coronal hole. This one is going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone in and around four to five days. And judging by the shape of it, it's going to cause fast solar wind to slam on really fast. So aurora photographers, you could definitely have us get bumped to storm levels, which you might bring aurora clear down to mid-latitudes for a short while. But sadly, this coronal hole is not the right polarity to give us an extended show. So you're gonna, if you're gonna catch it, you're gonna have to catch it quickly because it will likely die down reasonably quickly. Now, as we take a look at our far-sighted sun, this is stereo A and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see region 3120 as it rotates kind of to the sun's west limb in stereo's view and just behind it you can see that big coronal hole that's the coronal hole that's going to be giving us a, a show in about four or five days from the fast solar wind but look past it you actually see some regions in the south and a little bit of brightness on the east limb in the north these are regions 3105 3107 3111 and 3113 if anybody can remember that far back about a month ago these regions do look like they've quieted down a little bit, so I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of flare activity or solar storm activity from them, but they are continuing to boost that solar flux, so even as they rotate into Earth view over the next couple days, it looks like uh, the solar flux will stay up in the, in the good range, and so that means radio propagation on Earth's day side is going to be A-OK. -okay. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 25th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, now is your perfect chance. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have that small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and it should be giving us a small pocket of fast solar wind. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting uh, active conditions, but we do have up to about a 45% chance of a major storm at high latitudes, but it's not going to last all that long because there's just not a very big pocket of fast solar wind. So if you're going to catch it, it looks like the best time to catch it will be right around the 20th, but then things will definitely calm down reasonably quickly. Now also at mid-latitudes, we're expecting unsettled to possibly active conditions with up to about a 10% chance of a minor storm, but likely again, you're going to have to be in the right place at the right time. So it may be a little bit uh, fleeting for you to try to catch it at mid-latitudes. Nonetheless, as things begin to settle down, don't worry, we have yet another chance when a larger coronal hole rotates into the Earth strike zone and in around the 24th, aurora photographers, you're going to get another chance to catch some decent aurora. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is back in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have no big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, which makes uh, GPS users, you should be very happy because we have no risk for radio blackouts this week. And that is great news because it means your GPS reception, especially in those hurricane uh, devastated areas where you're doing search and rescue, you shouldn't have any issues at all with your reception. Now, amateur radio operators 
operator as well. You know, solar flux is also remaining in the triple digits, which means radio propagation on Earth's day side is also in the good range. And now that noise floor has dropped quite a bit because you don't have any of that radio noise from all those active regions on the sun. So enjoy this. This is easily going to last through this week and possibly into next week. And outside of the small solar storms that we're getting on Earth's night side, the disruption on Earth's night side should only be a little bit. So anyone doing radio propagation or radio signals, and this includes space traffic and space launch, you should be in the clear. So the space weather this week remains a bit on the mild side. We do have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone in and around the 20th, but it's reasonably small, so the pocket of fast wind that it's going to send us is not going to last all that long. Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could get a show right around the 20th. At mid-latitudes, well, it's kind of a little dicey whether you're going to see much at all. But if you do happen to miss the show at mid-latitudes, well, we do have that larger coronal hole that's going to rotate into the Earth strike zone right around the 24th, and that could send us some fast solar wind, so you could get another chance that might be a bit better. So just hang on. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, while things are looking great right now for you, activity has really died down on the uh, Earth-facing disk, and this means that we don't have to worry about radio blackouts, and we don't have to worry about a lot of radio noise from these active regions. So radio propagation looks really good for you on Earth's day side, and it looks to have a really good signal to noise. So enjoy, because this could last easily over this next week. Now, GPS users, you know what? The same thing for you. To, the, to a great degree, we've got a really good GPS reception on Earth's day side, and really outside of the small solar storming that we might be getting on Earth's night side over the next couple days, as long as you stay away from Aurora and stay away from those dawn dust terminators, everything should be top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.